One of my earliest memories of basketball is playing in the fifth grade that we used to play in a park league. We lost in the championship game, and I just remember crying and crying, and my dad just being like, you know, it's okay, it's just a game, but it was, it was like more than that to me, and that's when I knew that I really loved the game. A lot of my friends growing up joined gangs at an early age, or you know, even myself, I was running around people that were, in, you know, ended up in jail or dropping out, or I did not play basketball. Uh, as a freshman in high school, I was, I didn't even go to school, I failed out. So I would not go to school, but go play basketball at the parks. And I played with like, ex-convicts, like it was just wild. So when I was 14, my dad came along and was like, I'm leaving, do you wanna come with? And I just felt like that was an opportunity to kind of start over and, and play and get my, my grades together. So what was your relationship like with your dad? not very good. Uh, he wasn't around much uh, growing up. He was in a dark place. He struggled with depression, with alcohol and, and, and pills. And But he would always come to my games. He was like my biggest basketball sports fan. But that's all I would see him. He would just show up. We lived in an attic of a house. My dad and I had to share the one bed. And so when you're in this close space with someone who's a raging alcoholic, it, the tension was crazy because he would, he would just go off and you know, cur cursing me out, freaking out, and there's nowhere to go, there's nowhere to hide, <laughs> just right there. You know, he was always talking about, you know, killing himself or, you know, just disappearing. I always knew he loved me, but he just had a lot of issues with himself. What do you remember about that Super Bowl Sunday? The night before, we had a playoff game in high school and we beat our rival team, and I had the best game of the season, so well, the next day, it was all over the newspapers. My dad wasn't awake, so I noticed that he's not snoring. And I'm like, that's weird, because he always snored, like, like incredibly loud. And I'm like, oh, that, that's strange. So I tried waking him up. I was shaking him, and he wasn't breathing. At the same time, I'm screaming, like, wake up, wake up. And my grandpa comes running in, and he just knew. It was, it was crazy, because he just knew. He's like, Jake, Jake, Jake. And he looked at him, and he just started crying. And it's a day I'll never forget, you know. Your grandfather then became like a father figure to you. What, what happened to you mentally when you lost him as well? Oh, that was extremely tough. He taught me like what it meant to be a man and you know, I had to do his eulogy and that was extremely tough to stand in front of our family and, and talk about what he meant. Uh, you know, I couldn't even keep it together. He passed away right before my first daughter was born, which was devastating. She had a very traumatic birth. Um, you know, she, she almost had to have a blood transfusion. And at one point I looked at my mother-in-law, it was just us in the room, nobody else could, could handle it anymore. It was, it was just too intense. And we just gave each other a look like, we don't know if she's gonna make it. When my daughter was born, I, I fell to my knees and I had no strength, like I just collapsed to the ground. And it, it, that was the most intense experience of my life to this day. I think there's only two ways to respond to fatherhood, you know, you can step up to the plate or you don't. There's no plan B, this is it. And I'm gonna do everything I can. If I, that means I have to stay up 24 hours, if I have to work here and work out there and then go back to work, then I'm gonna figure out a way to do it. That, over time, is it's gonna pay off. The former Grizzly has made it to the NBA. Jake Wiley has been brought on by the Brooklyn Nets. I played at the lowest level of college basketball not even two years prior. A two year span, I played from the NAIA to the NBA. And I don't know if that's ever been done. I think the last person to play NAI to the NBA was Dennis Rodman, so it's been like years. What's this journey in Australia done for you and your family? Uh, it's reignited my love for the game. It's wild and stand by, And that's what Wiley Coyote does best. I mean, I'm very grateful for all the setbacks, you know, all the, you know, if you want to call them tragedies, you know, um, I'm grateful for all those things because I wouldn't be the person I am today if those things didn't happen. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for, you know, the way life has been for me up until this point.